Hey lovelies, Lisa here with a bit of an unboxing or at least a uncellophaning and flip through of two uh, reproductions of historical decks. The Universal Tarot of Mousset, which is a reproduction of the Claude Bordel um, 1751 Tarot de Mousset. It's a recolored, uh, redrawn version of the deck. It was originally uh, released with a companion book by Lee Burston. Uh, the companion book is supposed to be awesome, but I don't have a copy of it. I'm hoping to get a copy of it. And uh, Lee Burston is the guy who did the gay tarot. He did the book for uh, Chiro Marchetti's Tarot of Dreams. Really knowledgeable, um, learned uh, tarot historian and tarotist. And then the Los Carabao golden version of the Visconti Sforza deck. Uh, the Visconti Sforza when we talk about that deck, we're talking about a collection of decks, um, none of which survived in its entirety. They're like 15 different version of, versions of the decks. This is the Pierpont, Pierpont Morgan edition, the most common one, which is also this one and this one. And when we collate all of the surviving cards, there still are four cards missing. The four cards that are missing are the Tower, the Devil, the Knight of Coins, and the Three of Swords. Now, the three most common versions of this deck that you can find are the Il Menigello. I have that in the small format, uh, you know, the not the full-size format, uh, the small format. And um, I'm going to say that the artist who did the four cards is a guy named Scossato, but I don't, I don't remember. I'm, I may have the name slightly off. The person who did the four missing cards for the uh, U.S. Games, this is the both the older U.S. Games version and then this new version in the really nice deck, uh, the really nice box, is Luigi Scapini. So that's awesome. And then the guy who did the four companion, uh, the four missing cards for the Los Garabeo is Adonis Adonisov, the um, Bulgarian artist who um, also did all of those amazing. The Klimt, the um, the Botticelli, um, the Mantegna, the all of these wonderful historical decks. Um, I believe he did the Trumps for the Da Vinci. Is that right? Anyway, he did a number of he classically trained artists and did a number of uh, incredible um, kind of art decks for Los Garabeo, and he did the four missing cards here. So. Why did I buy these two decks? They're both, you know, still in print, easy to get on eBay, got them both, I mean, on Amazon, and got them both Amazon Prime. And the reason is because I've been having a lot of fun lately uh, doing uh, Enrique Enrique's, say, a PIP course and playing with my beautiful Jean-Claude Flournois uh, Noble. It's a, you know, it's a deck that actually I got this one uh, in a trade and the person I got it from had rounded the corners, but which I love. I mean, I love everything about this deck. I love the cardstock. I love the colors. I love the funkiness. This is a 1650, um, Tarot de Marseille. It's a, what's called a type one. For instance, Cupid's eyes are, uh, blinded in this as opposed to the Marseille that we're probably more familiar with the type two, uh, like the Convert. Um, but here's the thing, you know, I love this so much and I'm happy to use it in my home studies, but I want a Malsay deck that I can carry with me and that has a nice format and nice cardstock and that if I nonetheless destroy it, I can get a backup, right? Similarly with Visconti Sforza, I really want to be able to play with this deck, to learn it, to study with it, to see what it's like to try to read with it. Uh, so I, I also wanted a version that I could pop in a pouch and carry in my bag and play with on the road and not worry too much. But I'm probably, I'm almost certain I'm going to end up getting a backup copy because I love Adonisov's, um, I love his artwork so much and I love these blinged out Los Garabayo decks, which I now have several of so much that I think I'm going to want to have one that is pristine and then one that's just for play. Okay, so let's get down to it, shall we? Let's start with the Universal Tarot of Marseille. You know, the thing about these Los Carabao decks is 
They're not expensive, and their production quality seems to be remarkably consistent year over year, deck over deck. You know, you know what you're getting. You know the kind of tuck box you're getting. You know the kind of cardstock you're getting. Unlike U.S. games, where you know sometimes it's like, okay, this this version of the Aquarian Tarot is completely plastic. Oh no, now they've switched their printer and it's it has decent cardstock again. Los Scarabeo it just seems like they've been consistent year after year. Okay, so this is the little white book, and I'm wondering if this is going to have Leo Burstyn's text um, or not. It doesn't have a... Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, so Leo Burstyn. Graphics by Pietro Aligo. So Pietro Aligo is the guy who did the artwork for After Tarot um, and for uh, Tarot of the New Vision. So I own After Tarot. I'm familiar with his artwork. So he must have done the redrawing here as well. Um, really good art. So this is copyright 2006. Obviously, it's still in print. Um, and we have... This is always the part of the flip-throughs that I find the most uninteresting. <laughs> but I think people like them. So just for clarity's sake, 14 pages of English discussion, and we get a little blurb about the author. Um, he's the author of the Mouse Tarot Companion, which I think is the companion book for this. So maybe, maybe I can uh, do a little Google search and list more information in the comments below. Um, he has contributed articles to the annual Llewellyn's Tarot Reader books. Okay. He has written many deck reviews for the Tarot Passages website. So this is outdated because this is the text that was written in 2006. He's done more stuff since then. We get a little... Let me go back up a little bit. Okay, the Michelangelo Tarot. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So already pretty sure that I'll want to edge these cards. And it, this is a very familiar backing we see in a whole bunch of other Los Scarabeo decks, especially their historical. So, let's center this. Sorry for the, the shakiness of the table. I'm trying a, a new setup here. Okay, I'm just going to do a flip through and not say a whole lot. So first thing to notice um, is the softness of the backgrounds. These are, again, these are redrawn. The um, numbers are quite prominent. The names, if you're one of these people who get irritated by the, all of the European languages, they're not very prominent. Cardstock, you know, it's, it's a, maybe a little bit, well, no, I think it's just your standard. I was going to say maybe it's a little bit less meaty. Interesting palette, lots of bright sort of royal blues and reds, but the background, the modeled background definitely softens the look. You know, a real softening of that wood block. If if you're like Kelly at the Truth of Story, Truth and Story if you're watching this. I know you don't like wood block. This might be a wood block that you could live with. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. That's the first card where I've been like, yes, for sure. I like the, um, I have to check out the Claude Burdell. Oh, that's beautiful, too. The backgrounds definitely add something quite wonderful to the traditional Mousse. But I'm not, the palette is uh, leaving me a little bit cold. Um, the contrast, I mean, I'll have to see how I play with it and how, it, how I end up 
kind of interacting it, but the kind of contrast between the more pastel and then the bright red and royal blue, the yellows and the greens. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm digging it. Um, I am noticing that there is definite a definite effort here to color code each of the suits. So we have the rosy kind of salmon pink background for the cups. I love how the Knight of Cups in these Marseille decks is just holding the most enormous cup in the world. And then the Queen has it with a lid on it. And the King's like, yep, I got a domed lid on mine. Okay, so now we're in the, the discs, the coins, and we have a yellow background. I think part of the problem is I really don't like this color blue. It just, there's something about royal blue. I mean, I'm not, yeah, so you're, you know, that blue, red, and green, and yellow. Those are the, the four predominant colors. I'll flip through these a little more quickly. For some reason, the Queen of Pentacles in the Mouse deck always reminds me of something, you know, like the the Duchess in uh, Alice in Wonderland. I'll have to think about that. Oh, now this I like. So the green for the wands, which is interesting. We're sort of used to um, green as more of a, or I'm used to green as more of a pentacles color. But that green of the, the central baton is, uh, is very traditional. And then the green background is lovely. This is lovely. So, so far, this is my favorite of the minors. Yeah, it's just beautiful. These batons are a little bit different from the uh, sort of dodal and uh, noble that I'm used to with the kind of um, blunt edges. These are more like... Um, well, more like what we see in Visconti Sforza, where it's it's the uh, it's it's more refined looking, with that kind of finial. Yeah, this is great. Oh, and I like I like the coloring in the swords as well. So I would say the wands and the swords. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. And given that wands and swords are the suits I most, perhaps to my chagrin, identify with, it's not a bad thing that this is my favorite of this deck. And there she is, our queen. What a pain in the ass the queen of swords can be. There she is. Ooh. Like, is that a, a, a rapier? Or a scepter? It looks kind of rapier-esque. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, so we've got, you know, your very standard Los Scarabeo deck. The cardstock might be a little bit, might be a little bit thinner than some, no, I think not. I keep, I keep second guessing myself here. But, you know, Shuffle's wonderful, wonderful Lee. One more Shuffle. Because this is a deck that you can get for under $20 with Amazon Prime, I don't mind beating it up some. Yeah, so 
This is a deck that is going to help with some transformations and finding my way into um, sort of creating my space with understanding the Marseille and perhaps flourishing in that endeavor. Okay. All right, thank you, Leo Burstyn and Los Garabeo. And now, so uh, these are imprinted hot in gold. So, you know, the gold stamping, I mean, it's kind of extraordinary what they're able to do at the price point with these golden decks. And this deck has got to be edged. Okay, so there's the back. And it's actually not gold stamped. Um, a little bit more ornate than I might want. Um, a little cheesy, but that's okay. Okay, so we've got some notes here. The, the whole deck is restored by Avanasov, as well as those four cards. And copyright 2013, so a more recently produced deck or unless they reissued it. And it doesn't say, yeah, there's not a lot of information on these, which you wouldn't expect in uh, for the Visconti Sforza. Okay. So even the even the title card is really beautiful. I'm hoping that... Okay. Oh. Okay, guys. This is the prize. So, you can see the gold accents, right? Um, I think that's Amor Mio. I can't remember. I'll have to look that up. And a bon doigt. These are these are mottos, the two mottos of the Visconti and the Sforza families. Okay. So just the titles, the accents in gold, the numbers. Everything is just done beautifully here. Perfectly. It is perfection. Okay, if you're at all drawn to historical decks, and you probably are because you're watching this video, if you don't own this, you need to own this. Avanasov is such a brilliant artist, and the gold accents are amazing. Of the three Visconti Sforza that I own now, the two reproductions, um, the U.S. Games and the Imenegello. This is my favorite. Oh, look at that. I mean, the palette is just beautiful. It's been, it, you know, the problem with both the U.S. Games and then even Imenegello is that they're close reproductions and the colors are muted because these are decks that are quite old. Um, this has been refreshed without being overdone. I had the Golden Tarot by, um, I'm blanking on her name, um, which I, um, put into my giveaway pile. And actually, if you want, if you want it, let me know and I can send it to you because I don't want it anymore. It's, I edged it. It's nice. It's just, she just, it's, it's not a delicately done redrawing, but this is. And then you have the gold, and, oh, look at the queen. 
Yeah, see how the, so see how the batons, the wands in the, um, in the Visconti Sforza have these finials like we saw in the mouse eye. Beautiful. Just beautiful. So that is exactly the, that looks so much like the Pagan Otherworld Seven of, um, Seven of Wands, actually. The nave or page. I love the sweet expressions. Beautiful. She's one of my favorite queens. And the kings, you know, they, they look, they don't look very fierce, do they? A bon bois. So you can see how we get this pattern in the gold at the intersection of the swords and the batons. And unlike what we see in the later Marseille tradition, in the Visconti Sforza, you know, the, the ways of intersection of both wands and batons are the same, this sort of crossing over rather than seeing in that swords the sort of scimitar effect that we have in the the rounded swords, where only the central sword is straight. So that gives a little bit, when you're working with a Marseille, the Marseille pips, you have this distinction between the ways in which the, the pointy suits, the sharp suits, the penetrating suits, or um, distancing suits, as Enrique Enriquez calls them, you have this distinction between the kind of encircling of the swords and the crisscrossing of the wands, but you don't see that in the Visconti Sforza. Yeah. Oh, look at that. What a beautiful horse. And Our Lady, the Queen of Swords. Okay. Oh, and we forgot to look at, so this three then is Adonisov's, um, Reconstruction. And then the other was the Knight of Coins. So let's just look at that real quickly. And I want to do um, one of these days, I'm going to get a compan uh, a large size Il Menigello. And when I do, uh, so that's also an Adonisov. When I do, I'll um, compare all three versions of the um, added added cards, the devil, the tower, the knight of coins, and the three of swords. And you can see in the high priestess, like the detail in her dress, you, 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 get, you can start to see, and then also the faces, the ways in which Adonisov has cleaned this up. But again, it's very delicately drawn. Oh, look at her, her gloves, beautiful. The Emperor, one of my life cards, essence cards, and the Hierophant. Oh. So here we have the original lovers, right? The original love card, Cupid, blind. Um, and obviously, he knows something's, something's up. Look at, look at justice with the knight above her carrying out the sentence of righteousness. And here we see, you know, that early depiction of the old man with what is an hourglass, not a lantern. So he's a figure of Father Time or Prudence as much as he is the hermit. And then the Wheel of Fortune... You know, I, I reigned with the, the four positions of rising, 
in power, falling, out of power. And then, you know, you're at the top, but you have these asses ears because, you know, when you're at the top, you assume that you got there um, by your own talents, right? And that you're going to be there forever. When you fall, you're like, oh, life sucks. This is just the turn of the wheel. But when you're at the top, you're like, yes, it's all my, all my doing. And then we have Hercules beating the shit out of the lion. I like the golden accents in the lion's mane. The hanged man. I love that death. Oh, and temperance is so beautiful. Okay, so this is Adonisov's Devil. Which I feel like he's a little out of character for the deck. Very different from Scapini's version of this, which I'll do a video of that. And this is the tower, which is a little bit more in keeping with the deck, but it still feels a little bit too detailed. Okay. Like there's just more detail here than there is in the other cards. Beautiful star, moon, and the sun in this deck. Well, you know, maybe. I'm realizing how muscularly this got restored, so that makes me not feel as bad about the devil. He's kind of a handsome devil. <laughs> oh, judgment. And the world. And see how that, the, the world here, the sort of fortress, the castle, the, the uh, realm of humans, how similarly that looks um, to the, what's at the top of the cups. The Ace of Cups, where we have basically a depiction of maybe the holy city of Jerusalem. I'm desperately <laughs> I could have I could have planned this better. But where would the fun have been in that? Oh, I want to find the Ace of Cups. There we go. But see how this is kind of like a city, like a fortress, like that city. So the way in which the cups foreground the world and maybe the, the holy city of Jerusalem. Okay, so that's my little flip through first impressions. Um, very pleased with both purchases. The Tarot of Marseille, especially the wands and the swords are just glorious. Um, and it's going to be wonderful to have a Marseille tarot that I don't mind throwing in my bag and beating up. And then the Visconti Sforza is just beautiful. So, yeah, I'll have to get a backup so I can beat this one up <laughs> and play with it, which was the whole idea for getting it. Okay, there you go. I hope, uh, I hope you found that as enjoyable as I did. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later because I have to still film my Queen of Wands today. Mm-hmm. 78 days. The tarot won't uh, disclose its secrets if we don't apply ourselves to it one day at a time, one card at a time. All right, y'all. Love you.